is only an aspect of the source. Right? So that the aspect goes over here. Right? So we have the essence here, we have the aspect here, and we have the master manipulator, self-manipulator, self-regulator. Nietzsche specifically self says self-control. My ability to control my existence, my ex desires, I'm not out playing ball, watching a movie, you know, goofing off on the internet. I'm grinding. Grinding, grinding, grinding to present this. But this is only an aspect. When you see the, the, the final product of a work of art and the artist presents it, that's just an aspect. That, that, doesn't, even, that doesn't even grace the surface of the internal, the internal subjective interpretations of the artist. It's, it's not even a drop of water in an ocean. It's nothing. This is just one aspect of what it essentially is. So, with respect to answering the question then, insofar as we talk about morality as a deception, this process of becoming, of improving as a deception, we recognize that I present, this is, this is super important, I present an aspect Oh, of course, I'm public now, right? Oh, crap, I'm public. So, now that I'm public, hi, I'm Dr. Jason J. Campbell. You know, cover up the tats, don't do it in the beater. I'm acting morally. You want me to say yes and thank you? Yes and thank you. You want me to do the right thing? Do the right thing. You want me to smile? Smile. I present the aspect. The only thing that you can judge me on, then, epistemologically speaking, is the presentation of just the aspect. So the master manipulator presents the best liars, and I'm a, I'm a liar par excellence. The best liars present the image for consumption because they recognize that the only moral judgment that exists is a judgment on the aspect, on the presentation of, of something that could be understood. Right? You can only understand me as moral agent insofar as you have public accessibility to me. The real me, the essential me, the concealed me, the me that governs as an immoralist, I don't allow you access. You could never have epistemological access to that. Thus, this aspect, or this sense, I won't say the word aspect, this sense of myself, this essential sense of myself, exists independent to morality. Right? This is very, very, very critically important. It's not an easy question, and it's an even more difficult response. The idea is, I'm going to get a little ghetto philosophy here because I've been sort of heady with this. Um, dad goes to the daughter, um, I don't want you to talk in the boys. Hormones start to kick in. Desire starts to kick in. She wants to have sex. She wants to, she wants to have the attention of boys. Dad says, don't go out. She says, no problem. When she's around dad, she presents the aspect of being nice. This is like the movie ATL, which was awesome. She was so fine. That, that, what was her name? Laura London or whatever? God. So, you know, when she's around dad, she's happy, go lucky, smiley, blah, blah, blah. As soon as dad leaves, she's out talking to boys. Right? With boys, it's like, at least in the urban community, it's, you know, don't go to the streets. So when you're around mom, when you're around grandma, it's all PC, go lucky. When you leave mom, you go out hanging out with the bad guys. Right? The idea, is that, that's the ghetto version, but you, you get the idea, right? The idea is, in response to this, so the question is, what is the relationship between deception and the aspect, essence, distinction for Nietzsche? The relationship is, the ultimate deception is the deception of the moral agent to the system itself. The moral agent recognizes, a, a smart enough moral agent will recognize the ability to inherently manipulate the system of morality, by presenting an aspect of him or herself for moral judgment. That which is presented for moral judgment is only, is only a guise of who the individual really is. But the individual will be able to move throughout the social nexus as a moral agent when in fact he, he or she couldn't be anything further from the truth, right? So, you know, perception is king. Right? To be is, this is Berkeley, right? S.A.S. Percipi, right? To be is to be perceived. To be, existence, being, is perception. 
the aspect. Being is the aspect. Right? So Nietzsche, Nietzsche is brilliant in this regard. He's absolutely brilliant in this regard because he's fusing platonic being becoming discourse with Berkeleyan um, perception along with a critique on Schopenhauer and morality. It's, it's, just, it's just he's doing so many things in this one bit. Right? This is why I had to spend so much time on it because it's just overwhelmingly genius. The idea, and it's, you know, after you, hopefully after you explain it, after I explain it, it, it's rather obvious, right? The idea is the aspect is one part. It's a false part. It's a deceived part, right? So the, the, the level of deception, to be technical, really answer this question, there's two levels of deception in relationship to the aspect essence. There's the deception of the system itself, independent to any moral agent. And that deception is that you can actually attain morality. You can never attain morality as such. Why? Because there's always room for improvement. So the idea that you are becoming more moral is itself an act of sort of systemic deception. Why? Because you can never actually attain that. There's always room for improvement, hence there really isn't any being, the being becomes becoming. So there's an act of deception there. With respect to the essence aspect relationship, the moral agent, the smart moral agent, recognizes this and plays the system on itself. So that in terms of moral judgment, I, moral agent, present the aspect for judgment while keeping the essence outside of judgment. There's no epistemological accessibility of the system to the essence. The only epistemological accessibility, this is very technical actually, now that I'm saying it, the only epistemological accessibility for judgment is the aspect, not the essence. Thus, the moral agent deceives the system. So the system is attempting to deceive the moral agent. The, moral, the smart moral agent recognizes this and deceives the system. And then what ends up happening is that the only people that are left, which unfortunately are the masses, are the people who actually buy into the system and deny themselves. And deny themselves. And, and, and they deny themselves to the point that their denial becomes, their internal denial becomes an external denial. And Nietzsche said this over and over again. Right? Women ought not to use contraceptions because it is a bad thing for women to use contraceptions because the church told me that you shouldn't use contraceptions. I am not a woman. But, you know, they give the robot automaton, right? They just follow dogmatically. Rather than recognizing that you should say, oh, yeah, you know, oh, I, 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 would, I would use and I would support contraceptions. And, 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 and obviously, you know, that's an important thing. And, and then you go home and you don't. You manipulate the system. You lie. You become a liar. You become an artful. You become skilled at the process of lying. As Nietzsche says earlier, those who have the most power are the best liars. So you can be a do-gooder <laughs> and play by the rules and be Mr. Goody Tissues, yeah, <laughs> right? Or, or you can recognize that where, where there is power, there is the mastery of deception, right? So two-fold level of deception. The deception of the, I should here put the, um, the moral agent, it could be the artist, but the deception of the moral agent lying, quote-unquote, to this sort of abstracted system and the deception inherent within the system itself. So that's, that's the way in which we answer the question, the relationship between um, deception and essence aspect. Right? Very, very...